Hey, this is Jake from Wisconsin. Uh, you thought State Farm, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to start by saying I love all your stuff and your music and your YouTube and your family. Thank you, buddy. He says, but I want to know, when things get rough, when it seems like no one is there for you, or mainly the one or mainly the one that you want to be there for you doesn't seem to care. How do you push through to find motivation to move on and be happy again? How do you find happiness when it seems like there is none left? I'm glad we pulled up this question. Mm. favorite guest Chad people were lucky that asked questions today Chad is uh, so grounded such a a good thinker good listener good at kind of I hope my wife's listening yeah Are you right? getting all this yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah you could kind of craft your way unbiasedly through through these questions from from the listeners and I love that about you and uh, so I look forward to Every time you come to the EE yeah. farm. Great. So if you guys want to, uh, if you have any question, grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. That's the email. Email away. Uh, the more and more I get your emails, the more and more categories I get to divide them into. And the categories are pretty broad. So I split these up a little bit today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of leave some of these to you. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with a very light one. It says, hey, Granger, my name is Dakota. What, my question is, what is your favorite dog breed? Ooh. Which is, it's, uh, are you a dog guy? I am. Okay. Yeah, I've got a crazy story about a dog. So okay. I grew up with dogs and then got married, and my wife did not grow up with dogs. Her, her dad was really allergic, and so they could never have dogs. Right. So then we get married, and I'm like, hey, what do you think about a dog? And she's like, no, that's just one other thing to take care of. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then I go on a trip about a year ago, a year and a couple months, to Uganda. Mm. And I'm there doing some mission work and getting to go to these remote villages, speaking to pastors, encouraging them. And we I finish up in one particular village in the mountains, one of the pastors comes to me and says, Pastor Chad, I have a gift for you. Now, our driver that was driving us around these villages, he said, oh, it's probably going to be like a chicken or a goat, and we'll just, we'll butcher it and <laughs> right. have it for lunch tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. cool. That, that's a, that'll be a new experience. And he, the pastor comes out with this like six-week-old puppy. Wow. And we're all just shocked by this. Like, what are we going to do with a dog? And so I, I uh, call back home. I'm on the video chat with my wife and kids. And my wife being, you know, she's thinking, yeah, you can have the dog. Because she's, you know, in the back of her head going, there's no way you'll get that back from Africa through customs and all that stuff. Like, so she's like, yeah, I'll be, yeah. I'll be the supportive wife. And right. I'll, I'll say, yeah, sure, you can have a dog. This is the one shot you have to have a dog. And sure enough, it worked out. We got the dog back. So now I have this dog. Wow. I don't know the breed or anything, but he's he's our African dog from Uganda. What does he look like? What does he lean towards? He leans towards like a German shepherd, but the hair is shorter. Okay. And I think he's got some sort of hound because anytime he sees a deer or a bird or something, he kind of like he'll put the foot up and the tail goes straight and he kind of points a little bit. So I'm not hound, but pointer or bird dog or something. Okay. So German shepherd... Bird dogs, okay. something. 
That's cool. Yeah. I'll, first of all, I want to go on this next trip to Uganda with you. We are going in October. That? So Jeez, that absolutely. sounds great. We're going. Um, Get you there. I, I grew up with labs. In fact, yellow labs. I had three yellow labs from two years old all the way up to um, the, la- the third one died in 2016. So I've had a lot of labs, a lot of life with labs, I should say, and they've always been great. Um, they are shedders, mm-hmm. uh, but they're great family dogs. I now have three. I never thought I'd have three dogs, especially my wife, similar to yours, didn't grow up with dogs ever. So um, the thought of her having three dogs was definitely not <laughs> not predicted. <laughs> but we have a, uh, a German short hair, okay. two of them. We have a puppy and a six-year-old, and then we have a, a Vishla. All three are bird dogs. I've always heard that that mutts are are just a great dog because, first of all, they're very healthy. They don't have the pure breed health yeah, problems. Yeah. Um, and so, Dakota, it's hard to say. I I, I do love dogs just like Chad. Um, I'm not as much of a small dog guy. My dad used to say, "Little dog, little brain." That might offend some people, but <laughs> I, but but there is uh, there is something about. A bigger dog that that wants to get up in your lap and be part of the family and um so so yeah i, I think i'd lean uh just like chad i think i'd lean to the bird dog-esque type yeah dogs are thanks for the question dakota dogs are they just blow my mind how canines could be manipulated through breeding like that hmm. how everything started with a wolf at some right. point but you could have Chihuahuas and Great Danes and Bulldogs and Poodles, and they are yeah. all manipulated through breeding, which is so bizarre. Yeah. So crazy. That is crazy. Take the shortest nosed dog and breed it with the other shortest nosed dog and keep doing that, and you're going to have a Bulldog. Wow. I'm going to let you pick some of these. Sweet. Based on the subject. Okay. We have urgent relationship advice. We have, was it, what is it to be a man? We have making money. We have a, hey, Granger, I really need some advice. We, need a, we have a please answer. We have a promotion. We have faith and friends. And we have church and country music. Any mm-hmm. of those? Uh, well, the urgent one, maybe we should. Maybe we should do it just because it says urgent. The urgent yeah. relationship advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, Granger, I, I'd like to keep my name off of this one. Thank you for saying that early. I've emailed a few times, and I always love your wisdom and relationship advice. Thank you, buddy. There is a girl that I've dated almost two years, that I dated almost two years back. So I'm I'm assuming you're not anymore. We had an amazing relationship, but we were just two different people in two different places. Maturity-wise, I'm a little bit older. Recently, her and her boyfriend broke up. She's awesome. Uh, She, excuse me, she is someone that I'd be willing to give another shot with if she was willing to take it. I'm not sure if I reach out to her first or wait and see if she calls me uh, like she has done in the past. I can't stop thinking about what we could be. And at the same time, I have no idea if she would even be interested anymore. What are your thoughts? I immediately wonder what caused it not to Hmm. work in the first place. And has that changed? Right. Was there some kind of circumstantial component that's now different? Yeah, Uh, we were just two different people in two different places maturity-wise. So maybe he's thinking now that time has gone by, they're more equal in that that category. So the question is, I'm not sure if I should reach out first or wait. I can't stop thinking about what could be, but at the same time I have no idea if she'd even be interested that's interesting. Yeah, I would, it sounds like, you know, as you consider this, you have hesitation. Uh, and so I would explore that. What's, what's your hesitation? Mm-hmm. And like, quite honestly, I would, I would tell somebody to pray about it. Like yeah. that, that would be, yeah. you know, what, you know, explore what, what is the hesitation there? Ha- have the things changed that caused it not to work initially? Uh, and then, I would, yeah, I would seek wise counsel and I would seek the Lord on it. I would pray about it. Yeah. Um, 
I think Chad and I will say that. We could almost say that at the beginning in every question is, we'll pray about it. Mm-hmm. Pray about it first. Seek wise counsel. Those, that's that's how, that's the kind of a, the foundation of anything that we would tell you. I think I think he just and after that he goes and has coffee. Yeah. And just lays it out. Yeah. Um, and just yeah. Be honest. Be upfront. There's um, nothing you could lose from that. I think what what exhausts a lot of people is the game. Right. The, right. the posturing and trying to figure out and not willing to risk it. And I, I think guys should be willing to risk it, to be the ones that take the risk in a relationship, to initiate and be the ones that are vulnerable first by reaching out and engaging. So that's good to keep to, to be you know, consistent with my own, own advice there. I would say take some time, think about it, pray about it and then ask her out to coffee. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Avoid the game because no no matter what her reaction to this is going to be, she's going to respect you if you're completely honest and you're saying, listen, this is how I feel. Um, and you, you don't even have to tell her, I think you're the one of my dreams. You don't even have to say that. You just, you just, you say what's on your heart. I think there's, there could be something really special between us. And I wanted to bring that up to you as honest as I can without playing games and without drawing this out any further. I care about you a lot. And I think, I think we're very compatible. But before we go any further with that, what do you think? And she might go, oh, you know what? I just don't, I don't see us that way anymore. And okay, good. Guess what? Then you have a good answer, a solid answer to move on to the next part of your life. Mm-hmm. And if she says yes, then here we go. You're off to the races. So, yeah. Thanks for the question, buddy. Um, what do you think, Chad? What was it to be a man making money? I need some advice, promotion. Please answer. Church and country music, faith and friends. Okay, let's go into church and country music. Okay. And then we'll see. I like that. Okay. That could lead us a lot of different ways. Hey, Granger. I'm Kyle from Utah. I'm almost 16 years old. I know you said to those looking for a church that they will know when they find the church that's right for them. I just recently left a church that my whole family was going to for many generations because I didn't feel right. I, didn't, I don't think that some of the things they were saying were with the Bible. So I want to find a church that feels right, but I also know... Um, I need a way to find a church that my parents, I, I'm looking for a way to attend a new church because my parents wouldn't take me to the one and good. Okay. So your parent, you're 16. I got it. I got it. What would you recommend? And he, then at the end he says, also, I want to be a country music singer. So that's where country music comes in here. I've watched your podcast from the very beginning. So you're wondering you're not feeling right at your church that your parents go to and you're having trouble reconciling going to another one separate because you're only 16 years old. It's an interesting question. I don't think I've gotten into this this yet where a 16-year-old is going against um, where his parents are going to church. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things going on here given the age right that there is a there's the concept of honoring our parents Mm -hmm. that that i think is pretty clear biblically and what does it mean to honor our parents and Mm -hmm. respect them and um and without going into all of that i think that there's a component of that here that you know has the conversation been had with him and his yep. parents yep. would be one of the questions that I would have for him and, yes. and really encourage that conversation for him to be open and transparent about some of those things uh, and and to have them as a part of the conversation rather than just making a decision and finding an alternative and then just doing that one weekend and their, the parents kind of going, where, where did that come from? Specifically to your dad, Kyle. Yeah. So going, going to your dad and... I would be, I mean, it's tough because you're 16 and not that you aren't capable of thinking on your own. You you are, but 
you're you're going to have to have some some scripture references that completely contradict the current church, which is not easy. And and as we said earlier, this is going to take prayer and counsel. Yeah. And then you're going to have to go to your dad and go, Dad, I got to have to talk to you. And this is going to take some some massive maturity on your part. I don't know if I possess that kind of maturity at 16. That's all. Throw that out there. But you're going to have to go with scripture references to your dad and go, it says this, this, this. And on Sunday, he said this. Dad, what do you think? And then, then we get into where is your dad in this kind of situation? Um, I, this is a tough one for me, only because of the age. And what I don't want you to do is just bail on church. Right. And so you end up just not going anywhere. You, you stay at home. Your parents get dressed and go on Sunday. You stay at home saying, I don't believe what, what you are learning. That's not going to make anything better. You have to at least have a conversation. And then you're going to have to find these scriptures, which is difficult. And then you're, and then you're probably going to have to attend an online church for a little bit. Yeah, that's what I was right. thinking, that there's there's something to be said about the accessibility of great biblical teaching yeah. that's available on, whether it's through podcasts or online services. You can find historic and current um, sermons a lot of places, yeah. and you can still remain as a part of your family attending that local church, because I, I don't want to excuse the, you know, the importance of the local body of believers mm. is absolutely crucial. And so you don't want to remove yourself from that. And so it is possible to get great, sound biblical teaching and be a part of a church that maybe you don't, you don't totally yeah. agree with everything that's happening, but there's still something about the fidelity of a group of believers and, and the, the beauty of that and the benefit of that. I heard R.C. Sproul say one time that all preachers, all teachers, all pastors will only be right about 70% of the time because they're human. Not that they're intending to be wrong, but to to get up there and speak for an hour and say 100% truth the whole time is (laughs) is impossible because we're human. So I, I agree with Chad. Continue to show up with your family. If you were if you were thirty years old and had a couple kids at home and a wife, okay, it's it's time to to lead your family spiritually to where you feel called. But when you're sixteen and you're with your parents, there is a lot to be said for for obeying your parents, following them, and as Chad said, there's going to be truth in all of these churches at some level. You're going to be able to find truth there. You're going to have worship. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to worship. And, and everyone in that congregation doesn't all believe the same. They're not all against you. There's people in there in those seats that feel the same way as you do. Um, and if you're brave enough at 16, which I'm not necessarily even calling you to do this, but if you're brave enough, you could approach an elder in the church, maybe yeah. even the pastor himself. Yeah, I mean, that that would be powerful. If, <laughs> As a pastor, if I have a 16-year-old approach me about some things that that I've been saying or teaching in a humble way, yeah, right. uh, that would be powerful. It would. For both parties, yeah. I think. I think that's your answer, man. I don't think you move right now. I think you, uh, I think you stay put and you continue to learn. And uh, for everyone continue to read the scripture on your own, in your own time, your own quiet time, which I was not doing at 16. I was not um, diligently sitting up and and reading on my own, on my own merit, on my my own discipline. Hmm. I was not doing that at 16. So what what I'm asking from you is above and beyond what I was capable of at that age. But reading on your own, everyone should be able to read their own and and draw their own interpretations through their own reading and, and uh, led by the Holy Spirit. That's a good question, man. That is good. Uh, yeah, thank you, Kyle. And shout out to Utah. Where do you want to go now, Chad? Uh, so we had a question about 
masculinity? Yeah. It says. Well, what does it mean to be a man? It or? says, for you, comma, what is it to be a man? You want to read that one? Is there... It says, hey, Granger, how's it going? I've been trying to figure out how to answer this for a while now. I know we all have different answers, but but I haven't been able to get my answer, so I figured your answer might help me figure out mine. I ask you this because you're the best man, better said, most complete man I've ever seen. So for you, what is it to be a man? And what makes a man a man? Thanks, David. I have to say right off the bat, boom, I have to... I have to rebuke the uh, me being the best man or the most complete man. And it's interesting because Chad and I were talking about right before we started this podcast, we're talking about the world of social media, the world of influence that is unknown to humanity up until now. In, in fact, maybe even the last five years, that recent, that we could look everywhere and we could see examples and influence everywhere. And every time you see it, you're only seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. You're seeing what that influencer has prepared you to see. Mm -hmm. So you're not seeing my flaws and my mistakes. And you, you, you didn't see my journey and my stumbling blocks and my obstacles and the ones that still come up. So you can't look at me as the complete man, but I can lead you where you can. And that's in, in the four Gospels in the Bible. You can find the complete man there. And so I could tell you, if you're looking at me, I could tell you what I'm looking at. To try to, to seek the same answer. And I think Chad seeks the same answer. I think at some yeah. level all of us seek the answer of what is, it, what is it to be a man so we continue to study every day. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big part of my... Growing up and not having a dad present in the home, for me, a lot of my my early years, teenage years, formative years, I was exploring and asking that question, not even knowing I was asking that question, but wanting to know, when do I arrive? When do I become this thing called right, a man? Right. And so I'm looking at, I'm watching movies, I'm listening to music, I'm trying to look outside mostly in pop culture for masculinity. And a lot of it had to, you know, revolve around alcohol, drugs, sex. It was, those were, in those arenas, that's where I saw what I thought was manhood. And it was a big part of me understanding fully what the gospel is, my new life in Christ, and then having manhood defined completely counterculturally and realizing that in Christ we have a demonstration of manhood that involves vision, right? The ability to see God's power and presence despite the obstacles. The idea of empowering others and enabling others rather than using other people. Uh, the idea of integrity that, man, what you see is what you get. I'm not going to put on a show and be something I'm not. Uh, the idea of attitude that I can't control what happens to me, but I can control how I respond to those things. And so therefore, my attitude, um, humility, uh, the idea of that I'm not going to build up myself. I'm going to walk humbly and have a right understanding of myself and my capabilities. And, you know, the idea of meekness, which, man, our culture often associates just because it rhymes with weakness. <laughs> yeah. But meekness in the understanding that it is power under control. Like the ability to, to ha as a man, we have certain strengths and abilities. We don't always need to tout those. We don't always need to make that the, the, the thing that people know about us, but we use it in order to serve and help other people. It's like a, a, a NASCAR going into the pit. Yeah. You know, going at 40 miles an hour. Right. And all that power under complete control at 40 miles an hour. That's it could open analogy. wide open. It could, but yeah. it's holding it in meekness. And that, guys, that's a powerful thing, is, is harnessing what you're capable of in a, a very controlled atmosphere. And that's the much harder thing to do than fly off the handle. 
mm. and and engage in power full strength. Yeah. When you see a when you see a quarterback and you're watching football, and you see him going 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 off at the ref or cussing out the coach or throwing his helmet, you just think, man, what a loser. Mm -hmm. But when you see the quarterback that it, it's fourth down and two, he's got to make this first down. He's just cold as ice. His eyes are clear. He's composed. He's composed. He's checking out the line yeah. of scrimmage, looking back and forth. He knows exactly where he's going. That's that meekness in that quarterback that's so admirable. And you go, I want to be on that guy's team. Mm -hmm. And he might not even make it. He might not get it. And you know that if he doesn't get it, he's going to be ready for the next game. And if he does get it, he's not going to take the credit for it. Yeah. He's going to say, this is, this is the team's win. This is the fundamentals. This are my coaches that taught me this. That's the kind of guy you want to look up to. That's the man you want to become. Yeah, I talked to my sons about the idea of the victim mentality. That yeah. that is not something that, that is not manhood. I talk to them all the time. I'm, I'm not raising boys. I'm raising future men. And the idea that, that we take ownership, whether it's our fault or not, in any given situation, we don't blame someone else. We identify what it here can I own, what is it that I can take responsibility for and, and work on, get better, and, and push through. But I'm not going to blame other people. And, and so right now I'm in the world of youth sports, and I get to coach Little League. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's a lot of times the umpire, man, we could really blame it. Man, we had bad umps or whatever. Man, so good. But that's, no, that's not what men do. Men go, okay. I, I gotta, I gotta make it clear next time that I didn't mess up, or that I am safe, or that I made the throw, or whatever. I've read this on this podcast before, and it echoes what Chad's saying. But it's "If" by Richard Kipling. Mm. You heard this poem? I think I, I, I might as well read it to you, David. It says, "If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you could trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too." If you could wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated. Don't give way to hating and yet look too good. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you could dream and not make dreams your master, if you could think and not make thoughts your aim, if you could meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, if you could bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you could make one heap of all your winnings and risk it all on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. If you could force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your long turn after, to serve your turn long after they're gone and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you could talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you. If all men count with you, but none too much. If you could fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is even more, you'll be a man, my son. That's where you drop the mic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look at that poem. If you want to know what is a man, what does it take to be a man? I look at, I look at Rudyard Kipling's poem and, 1885. That's awesome. Yeah. Good question, David. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if there is a definitive answer for you, but there's, there's a big universe for you to dive into. Thank you, buddy. So you brought up NASCAR. Have you, you probably have been in the pits. I have, man. It's, in, it's incredible. I see. I can only imagine, but you've been there and just the, the rumble. Is it just kind of shake your soul? Like, like nothing I've ever seen. When, when you're standing on a, on a, at the end of a turn or at the beginning of a straightaway and they come, they're coming all the way around the track and then they fly around that turn and rush past you, it literally will blow. A, if you're wearing a hat or sunglasses, it just blows them off. It's unbelievable power. Man, I want to I wanna be in the pit someday. <laughs> that would be sweet. We're going to take a break. Be right back. podcast today with Chad Warren is brought to you in part by Ritual. I want to talk about Ritual for a second. You deserve to know what you're putting in your body and why, especially when it comes to something like 
everyday vitamins that we might take. Here comes Ritual. It's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamins formulated with high-quality nutrients in biodegradable forms that your body could actually use. What you're not going to find in Ritual is sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, and artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed-release capsule design makes taking your vitamins easy. Now, vitamins for me, personally... I have always been tough on my stomach. In fact, I usually give up on vitamins after I take them for a little bit because I just can't take them on an empty stomach. They just mess me up. I don't know what it is that does that. But uh, Ritual, because of the way they've designed it, it seems like it's just perfect for me. A multivitamin should contain key nutrients and forms that your body could actually use to fill the gaps in your diet. No shady extras and Ritual's delayed release capsule design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 and just two daily pills. You'll always know exactly what nutrients you're getting, what you're taking, and where they come from, thanks to Ritual's one of a kind visible, visible supply chain that they could offer you. Now available for women, men, and teens, Ritual's multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support life in all the different stages. Your multivitamins, this is one of the coolest things, your they're, they're multivitamins are delivered right to your door with free shipping always. You can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription at any time. And if you don't love it within your first month, they'll refund your first order. No questions asked. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash Granger to start your ritual today. Podcast today is also brought to you by Away. This is the first time I've read about Away, and I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited because I've been hearing about them and they sent me a product. Away is a modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler and every kind of trip. They started with the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make you and your travel more seamless. And now, when travel looks more difficult than ever before, you can count on a ways range of suitcases, bags, and accessories whenever you take your next trip. Now, I travel all the time, so well, at least I did before the craziness of the world. So having a specific suitcase or bag or accessory tailored to me and my lifestyle is key and a way fits me perfectly. So whether it's a trip to the corner store, a weekend away, or an extended stay with friends and family, we're all navigating the current reality of travel. But no matter your destination or style, away suitcases, bags, and accessories all come in a variety of colors, sizes, and materials to suit your needs and inspire your future travels. This this suitcase, guys, that they they have sent me to start looking at has the perfect pockets. It has the perfect layout for everything that I need. And I could go in and I could I could create exactly what I need from this company. And it just it just fits me perfectly. And I'm so excited to to read on this podcast about a suitcase. All of the way suitcases are designed to last a lifetime with durable exteriors that withstand the roughest of baggage handlers like me. I'm terrible on my bags. I go through them so often. And every single suitcase comes with an interior organization system that I'm talking about that you could pull out. It's got built-in compression pad that you could pack in more and hidden and re removable laundry bag. It separates your dirty clothes and you could like reorganize it. Four 360 degree spinner wheels that guarantee the smoothest roll even through the most hectic of airports and stations and gravel roads going into the county fairs like I have to do. Available in different materials like polycarbonate, aluminum, durable nylon, varieties of colors and sizes. TSA approved lock combinations for all your belongings, which is great. If any of your uh, suitcase breaks, this sucker has a lifetime guarantee. Away standout customer service team will arrange to have it fixed or replaced. There's a 100-day trial on everything Away makes. So look at this, guys. We got Away products are designed to last a lifetime, and there's a 100-day trial on everything Away makes. Take the product on the road, live with it, travel with it, even, even get lost with it for like 100 days, and if you decide it's not for you, you could return any non-personalized item for a full refund. During that period, no ifs, ands, or asterisks. Away offers free shipping and returns, so any order within the U.S., U.K., Europe, and Canada, free shipping and returns. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases, at awaytravel.com slash Granger. That's away, A-W-A-Y, travel.com slash Granger. 
All right, this is good stuff, man. I enjoy these. I enjoy these just as much as maybe the person that enjoys them the most that's listening. I, I enjoy it sitting here. Yeah, this is fun. Um, if you have a question, email grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. We're, me and Chad are, are moving through them today. Up next, we have some, some subjects. We have making money, one that says question, one that says, I need some advice, promotion, please answer, and faith and friends. Any of those stand out to you? Hmm. That's funny because when I ask you that, and I wonder if people are going, oh, please answer number yeah. three. <laughs> I wonder if there's some we don't get to and that somehow we can respond in comments or something. Sure, I don't know. sure. Uh, making money. I making mean, that, money. That probably interest people. Hey, Granger. My name is Joe. I'm 13. Man, you guys. Get a young audience. I know, man. I know. I have so much stuff I have to pay for. Ammo prices right now are ridiculous, and I love shooting. I have an elk hunt that I need gear for, plus gas and renting a trailer, fishing, my truck, savings account, etc. I have a car detailing business that pays okay, but I can't get very, very many customers. I'm trying to get a job on one of my family's ranches, but that's not a guarantee. Do you know any way for me to earn some money? Thanks, and yee yee. He sounds like he's from Montana, just like yeah, you. Yes, so did he say he's 13? I have run into this so many times on this podcast where I have to th- read their age over and over. But yes, 13. 13. And 13. He's, he's ammo prices are getting him. <laughs> His truck. Wait, why, why does he have a truck? I don't know. That's what I, I'm like, what? So he's he's very future thinking because he's a good, if he's in oh, Montana. Oh, here it is. My truck savings account. Oh, tra- he's okay. saving up for it in three okay. years. Yeah, yeah. Smart. Yeah, that's Smart, great. dude. He does sound like a Montanan. He sounds like a, just He's like got you, things Chad. kind He's of lined Montana. up. He's like elk hunt, ammo prices, mm-hmm. get a truck. I have to start answering this the same way I answer all of these um, type questions. I just say, Joe, make sure you're not skipping out on just being a 13-year-old boy. I don't mean that in any kind of offensive way because I was once that and Chad was once that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want you to get caught up in saving and responsibility of making money and adding jobs to your resume and skip out on the fact that sometimes you just got to go roll around in the dirt and in the sunshine and be 13. And I worry about that. And I think this might go back to what we said earlier with the world is so vibrant on social media right now that people feel like they're missing out a Mm -hmm. lot. The fear of missing out is a real thing. People watch these YouTubers, these influencers, these TikTokers, and they go, man, that's what I want to do. How do I get there? Yeah. How do I start saving so I could do that? When, when I look at it and go, man, you've got a, you have a lifetime of responsibilities ahead of you and worries and bills to be paid and money to be saved and jobs to be worked. You have a lifetime of that. Why do you want to start that so early when sometimes just going out in the woods with your dog and finding a little fishing hole? Yeah. Well, and I, I'm impressed because there, there are a lot of younger folks in our culture that would love it to just be handed to them. Here's a young guy who is willing to work. Yeah. He's willing to do the hard thing. So my advice to you in order to continue to enjoy being a kid is find a way to leverage what you love to do. It sounds like you love to hunt. Is there a way that you can do what you love by elk hunting or, or whatever, and you could, yeah, start to generate an income from that? I don't know. Um, yeah, right? like maybe going to an outfitter. Right. Maybe maybe you are from Montana. Maybe you are from a... I'm assuming you're from some kind of mountain state. Utah, Idaho, Colorado. And what if you go down to a, a local hunting outfit and say, my name's Joe, I'm, I'm willing to work for food and, and gas money, and I just want to be part of this organization. I love elk hunting. I love being out in the woods, and I'm, I want to learn, and I want to learn from you older guys. And I'll carry your packs, or I'll sweep the totally. floor. I'll wash your cars. I'm actually from a 
car de detailing company. I could wash your trucks for you. Uh, I can clean your rifles for you. Exactly. Um, there's a book called Where the Red Fern Grows. Mm. Such an awesome classic. One of my favorites. And Absolutely. It's like a strange. It's like a strange rite of passage in my family where I have to read read it to my kids when they get to a certain age. We read it together. I read it aloud, and it's it's a story of this boy who his passion, like yours, Grady or Joe, Grady's email. Joe is to so he wants to go hunting and he wants to hunt raccoons with two dogs, and he can't afford the dogs or anything that goes with it. So he starts um, doing all kinds of odd jobs like collecting collecting berries and and helping his grandpa at the at the general store and and um trapping hides and he it this takes place in the late 1800s in arkansas or oklahoma and he earns enough to buy these dogs that they're 50 dollars for two dogs so that's an awesome book and it's it's such a simple simple task for a a simple goal. He wants two dogs, and he needs to make money to get there. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome you have dreams, and I think Chad is absolutely right that it's it's awesome you have this kind of ambition. When we just talked about the entitlement problem, mm -hmm. the millennial problem that we mentioned, and you don't seem to have that at all. In fact, you're willing to take on more, and you're wanting advice on how to expand even more what you're already doing. But the fact is, these years are going to fly by. You're going to be 14, and then you're going to be 15. So fast, it's going to, you're going to be 20 and go, man, where did those seven years go? Hmm. And you don't want to say, I know where those seven years went, working at the car detailing business so that I could buy something that I don't even have anymore. So... <laughs> Keep, the, keep the, the passion and the ambition. Maybe pump the brakes on money, money, money. And find a way. There's, my brothers and I always, always say there's, there's always a back door to every house you want to go into. And in country music, we constantly see the line waiting at the front door of people trying to get in. And we always could find some kind of open window that we could crawl through in the back. And I'm, I'm suggesting that with you, with, this, with your elk hunting passion, that there may be a back window you could slide through into one of these companies, and you might be hunting for free. Just for uh, sweeping the floor of the hunting lodge. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you, Joe. Let's see. We got... Um, oh, here. This is the one that says question. I opened it up. I saw the word church in it. You work at a church. Let's read this one. Right. It says, hey, Granger, I found out through my son watching Earl about you, and I watch the Smiths and your family as much as we can. Here's the deal. I've been in church my whole life, recently changed churches as something was missing in our old one. Things have been better, but I need some personal, not sure how to say it, tune-up. Do you have an author or simply a daily devotional for a guy? Um, needs to be paper, as I don't do any kind of apps. I work alone. I have a lot of time to think. Thanks a lot, James from Ontario, Canada. So you have um, some classics out there. My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. Yeah. Yep. You've got Morning and Evenings by Charles Spurgeon that I think are phenomenal. You can get some really cool, if you like paper, you can get some really cool kind of old bound versions of both of those um yes uh there would be uh one that's a little bit more intense but still uh highly valuable is it's called for the love of god and um it is there's a two volume version but it basically um yeah you can get one volume per year but it they're these are all designed around daily interaction in the scriptures uh, so that you're every day, every year in the Word. And, and these, these um, men and very gifted teachers give you some insight into the text. Yeah, that's great. There was one that I got, I've got one time for a gift, and I went through it in a year, and it was like, devotionals from a deer blind or something so it's very you know it's very uh country relevant they would read it read a a passage 
it, it help explain the passage, and then it would have a direct relation to nature in the outdoors and uh, a way to connect with those thoughts in the outdoors. I'm assuming this is kind of where you're coming from. I know Ontario, Ontario is a very, very country place. Um, so I think the fact is there's a lot. There's a lot of really good ones. And, mm-hmm. and if you find a, a Christian bookstore, maybe they could even direct you um, to some of these. And I always have to say that at one time in my life, I became what I call a devotional junkie. And it became for me, not everyone, and I'm just speaking for myself, it became a little bit dangerous because it started replacing the actual Bible reading itself. Mm-hmm. And it starts to, to kind of clear coat the Bible and cherry pick and paint everything beautifully when that's not always what we need in our life. Sometimes we just need to go straight to the truth. And what it also does, I think, reading too many devotionals, once again, it's not bad or wrong in any way. It's not wrong. But it needs to be a supplement, Mm -hmm. not a source. And it starts, if you take the supplement too much, it starts to dilute the source where the source gets boring or doesn't matter or becomes irrelevant. there's, There's the danger of it. Once again, not saying, James, that that could happen to you. But this is what happened to me. It starts to dilute the source. And so I had to I had to get rid of all devotionals and go straight to the source until I was good enough in the source that I could supplement, if that makes sense. And I think a way to to guard against that is, you know, in a devotional, they'll have the Scripture passage. Mm-hmm. And some of them have the passage kind of printed out there, or you need to have your Bible ready. But I would say always begin with whatever passage that they're going to kind of give you their devotional thoughts on. You read the scripture first. You get into that passage. You read it. You process it. Chew on it. And then see what they are going to say or mm-hmm. guide you in. Um, so don't just don't just open it up, see the scripture reference, and then read their thoughts and then move on. Yeah. Make sure... It's you guys having a conversation, whoever the author of that devotional is, about the text. Yeah, yeah. And read the paragraph before the text and the paragraph after the text just to get some some of the the foundation of where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. you got to have that contrast a little bit. Um, for me, when this all came to a head with me, I just started in Matthew. Matthew 1 opened it up. It's the beginning of the New Testament and started reading just cold, no devotional, just out of my own interpretation and made it all the way through the New Testament once before I was ready to then okay, not only check out some man-made references and, oh, yes, I remember that part. And I know how that now I know. And it just and it connects everything way better. It's, it's like watching, take your favorite movie and you could live your whole life just watching the preview of the movie. Hmm. That's a great way to put it. And the previews are great. They're entertaining. Mm-hmm. You get a lot from it. But you're missing the whole thing. Yeah, the whole story. <laughs> you're just story. getting the highlights of it. And and so no matter what no matter how you think about the the preview, you're still not seeing the end. They're not going to show you the end on the preview. You're not seeing the wrap up. So anyway, that reminds me of the podcast idea. Remember I I floated by you? Yes. Yes. This idea of so tell what would that. it be like to on a weekly basis, just open the text, read a passage, and just talk about it. Mm-hmm. But read the text and and get into a passage of scripture, and then continue with the next one, and and just read through a book of the Bible at a time, and just talk about it. Yeah, you know, I think uh, that would be so exciting. I would, I mean, I I do that every day anyway. Yeah, so it'd too. be fun to. Yeah. To do it um, yeah. sometime. If you do, if you get into this, James, um, regardless or if it's devotional or if it's just Bible itself, say say a prayer before you start that you have a, a clear mind to be reading it, that you're reading it not to just check a box, that you read it or that you filled a space at your, at your work when you're alone because you're bored. Don't think that's what you're doing, but... Um, Say a quick prayer 
and it could be as informal as you want. Just, God, I'm about to open up this word, and I need it to speak to me. I need to see you through this text. I need to understand you better through this text and the way that it relates to me. And it's a it's a supernatural book. It's, it does supernatural things, and you can't read it like like it's uh, where the red fern grows, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was open with uh, in Psalm one nineteen. I think it's verse sixteen. Just was reading that this week. Were you? Yes, Psalm one nineteen. And he says, "Lord, open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things from yeah. your word." This this request that God would open our it's eyes perfect. to see what's there. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. There's a time and it's like in the in the fifties. I don't remember which one, but it says it is good that I've been afflicted. Mm. It is good that I have been afflicted. That is so powerful, mm. and not not many people um, could come to that kind of realization that it's good that I've been afflicted. Let's go to. Thank you, James. Let's go to, uh, I'll let you choose, Chad. Hey, Granger, I need some advice, promotion. Please answer or faith and friends. Uh, either advice or please answer. We've been, I don't know, those seem, I, I get, yeah. I feel yeah, bad yeah, for the I, ones that seem totally, urgent. I'm you're like, totally, oh, man, you're right, I want to help right. out. Let's go to please answer. It says, hey, this is Jake from Wisconsin. Uh, you thought State Farm, didn't you? <laughs> I just want to start by saying I love all your stuff and your music and your YouTube and your family. Thank you, buddy. He says, but I want to know, when things get rough, when it seems like no one is there for you, or mainly the one, or mainly the one that you want to be there for you doesn't seem to care, how do you push through to find motivation to move on and be happy again? How do you find happiness when it seems like there is none left? I'm glad we pulled up this question. Mm. Thank you, Jake. Shout out to Wisconsin. And man, that that this is this is like the question. This is this is the question that everyone asks and just words it differently. And you just went straight to the point. How do you find happiness when it seems like there is none left? Such a such a human emotion such a human sentiment. Yeah, because I think it's very easy to tie our our happiness to circumstances, mm. right? If the, if the conditions are ideal or our expectations are fulfilled, then we can be happy. And I think there, there's true liberation and freedom when our, our joy, which I'm going to use a different word, right? Our ultimate, ultimate contentment isn't tied to circumstance or fulfilled expectations mm. because rarely do things play out the way we would design them. And usually it's probably better that they don't, right? Yeah. Uh, that, and I mean, how awesome, how blessed is it to be somebody who navigates this world and can have joy through a variety of different circumstances because it's never tied to if this happens, then I'll be happy. Or if this plays out, then I'll be happy. But it has to be tied to something that's not, um, that doesn't ebb and flow or, or go with the waves of the sea, right? It's not tossed about, but a joy that is tied to something that is unchanging. Hmm. You know where I'm going. Right? I know where you're going. Right. So if we tie our happiness to a job or something that's there in the future, something that um, we're hoping for that we hope plays out or we tie it to a person, uh, those things will almost eventually not turn out and have a high probability of failing. But if our, our hope is in something that is sure and yeah, isn't influenced by, you know, humanity or circumstances or job or money. Do you get this kind of question when you're when you're doing discipleship or counseling or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, almost all the time. Almost all the time. Mm -hmm. I figured. So this question sounds like the the root of this question from Jake sounds like it's it's some kind of breakup. 
because he says, I want to know when things get rough, when it seems like no one is there for you, or mainly the one you want to be there for you doesn't seem to care. Mm -hmm. It sounds like there's been some kind of either girlfriend breakup, wife divorce, wife separation, or even a good friend um, has turned his back. So we are, we are, humans need community. Mm -hmm. We need connection. We're built for connection and community. And the good news for Jake is that we live in a modern world where it is, it is we all, we live closer together than we ever have in human history. Meaning if you were a, a pioneer in New Mexico on a ranch and you're, you know, you're all alone, I, it would be tough. It would be really tough. You know, you'd have to move to Kansas City or something. But Jake, wherever you are in Wisconsin, don't, don't shut me off here. Okay, don't, don't shut this podcast off when I say this. But there's a church close to you. And the reason I could even say that is because I was in, I was in South Dakota on Sunday, Sioux Falls. And I called, I called Chad here uh, about a week and a half ago or so. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I'm going to be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota on Sunday. We're playing that night. And I'm going to be available that Sunday to go to a church. Do you have anybody there that you know of? He did a little research. I still don't really know how you did it, but he found a church for me. He goes, hey, check this out. Here's the website. Um, if I was going to Sioux Falls, this is where I would go. So I was like, cool. So I went, and I went in with all these strangers. Of course, I had two, two of my guys with me, but I went in to, to this church with strangers, and I went straight to the hospitality desk. I'd already emailed them before and told them I was new and coming. And they had a little gift bag waiting for me nice. with a little coffee mug and a journal and a pen. And we, we had a great talk. And then, and then I was just welcomed instantly into this family. I'm not going to lie, guys, on this podcast. We started worship. I literally started crying. Hmm. I literally started crying because I had been on the road for a week. I was away from my family, um, away from my friends in Texas. And I felt like I was home. I felt for that time under that roof, I was accepted, I was wanted, and I was connecting with other humans. And the reason I even bring it up is because you said when it feels like no one is there for you. And I'm telling you that wherever you are in Wisconsin, down the road is a, is a church. And... I'll help you find one. So if you wow, if you need that's help an finding offer one, right there. I will. Yeah, I'll find one that I would go to near you. That's if, an that's an incredible offer. I don't Jake. know how I would do that or how. Um, I had to email right back here, okay. Jake. Email right back here if this is something that's that's perking your interest, yeah. and it absolutely might not. But you asked me, and so this is my answer, and it's my podcast. So if email right back on the same email and say, yes, actually, I would like to hear from Chad about a church. Okay. Chad's going to get your, your hometown, and he's going to find that for you. In fact, I don't know if I should even say this on air, but maybe if there's anyone listening that has that yeah. similar question, goes, well, I'm in South Carolina, this town. Where is there a place here? Yeah. We might not always be able to find you one, but we'll look. Yep. So. Good call. Yeah. <sighs> I, yeah, we're kind of like in the middle of maybe have time to do one more. Let's do this promotion one. Hey, Granger, my name is Justin Toner. I'm a big fan of yours, and I've been wondering if I can get your opinion on something. I've been at my job for six years now. Finally got a promotion, dot, dot, sort of. They told me I have the job, but they needed to hire my replacement first. Well, that happens, and then someone quits, and now I have to stay longer, and they've been telling me different excuses and why I can't just move up yet, and they keep delaying it. Would you just work through that or start looking for a new job? It's been four months since they told me I have the job. Thanks for your time. Come back to Tulsa soon. Hmm. This is one of these questions where we just need you really present with us. <laughs> So we could say yeah, I have so many questions. We could say, "How's your boss? Uh, how, how's your commute to work? Um, how's your benefits? 
Um, what's your skills? How easily could you move yes. to another position? This man, I have to say, this is going to go back to what we've said several times here: is open communication with your boss. It's a, hey boss, I, I would love to be able to grab lunch with you or sit down with you. When's a good time? Next Friday, okay? No. How about next Tuesday? Until so you can get him, you need, you just need ten minutes with him, and just say, boss. I love this job. I, I'm even more excited about this promotion. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could really deliver for you in this capacity. And to be totally honest with you, I'm a little bit stuck right now because I'm, I'm kind of in this, I'm in my old job and I, I was excited. And so I'm needing some motivation. How could I stay motivated and still be encouraged that I am going to move up? Is, is there a date you could give me? Is there a deadline you can give me? Yeah, I think that's, the open communication, mm. I think that just would clarify a lot. And asking for, give me a sense of the timeline. What needs to happen and, and when does that need to happen for me? Because I want to continue to be excited about working here and that future uh, promotional job that you've offered. I continue to get excited about that. But because you offered it, you got the wheels turning. And so now I'm really excited. And if you don't think that that's a possibility, I might need to explore something because you know i'm i'm thinking about that that new position <laughs> man i would almost write down what chad said on a notepad and memorize it somewhat and i an honest boss hey if the guy's not a good guy then you don't need to be there anyway if he doesn't accept that with uh with open ears and and just say justin absolutely let me give you a straight answer if he can't that's a good indication you're not in the right place anyway. But any yeah. decent man would say, I get it. Absolutely. This is this is on me and this is a this is a bad circumstance because of we lot we needed to hire a replacement for your old job. So someone quit. Justin, I get it. Let me tell you what, let me tell you what. July first, I'm gonna I'm gonna be either bump up your pay or you're gonna be in a new spot. But we need you here. Don't leave. Or he might say, Man, I, I'm in a different spot than I was when I told you you'd have the promotion. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm in the position to say that. And then you can go, okay, here's my two weeks. Yeah. And you'll feel better about it when you leave because you'll feel like you put it all on the table. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Dude, that's all the time we have. That went fast. I know. It went fast. If you guys want to see Chad again, say more Chad in the comments. But, that was uh, fun. Yeah, you guys are awesome. See you next time. Yee yee. Thanks for joining me on the Granger Smith Podcast. I appreciate all of you guys. You could help me out by rating this podcast on iTunes. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel. Hit that little like button and the notifications bell so that you never miss any time I upload a video. If you have a question for me that you would like me to answer, email grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. Yee yee.